Hey, hey, hey. Hi there, guys. This is Mr. Gonzalez uh, going over another quick uh, review of genetics. So follow along in your notes like we usually do for our test. So we said that genetics is the study of heredity, and that's basically how your traits are passed on from one offspring, sorry, from parent to offspring. And then we gave you a little bit of history, and we talked about how there was a struggle to find uh, what was the thing that was... Um, being passed on. A lot of people thought it was protein. They finally figured out it was DNA. And then we said Watson and Crick, these two guys were the ones that sort of figured out the shape of DNA, which we call the double helix, which is a twisted latter. We then said, hey, what are some cool advances about, um, you know, since we've discovered DNA, what were some, um, some great scientific advances? And we said, hey, we got to clone you can clone things, and we talked about Dolly the sheep, how that little baby there is a clone of the mama. We then said that TV shows, <laughs> like CSI, um, that it's DNA is used to identify individuals in a crime. Everyone has unique DNA, is what we said. We also used the word DNA fingerprint, remember, and we said it didn't have anything to do with your fingerprints. Um, it's just the word fingerprint is used because everyone has unique DNA. We then said that your daddy uh, that can do paternity tests. Who's the daddy? We said foods have been genetically modified. Sorry, modified. And we talked about the tomato as being one of the first commercially available modified foods. Then we said, hey, where is DNA? And if we took you and we grabbed one of your cells and then we grab the nucleus, we would look inside and see something called chromatin. We'll see either chromatin, if the cell is not dividing, or chromosomes, which are X-shaped dudes that have DNA in them. So this right here, this picture shows you a cell and then a chromosome. And then if you unwrap that chromosome and unwind it, you'll finally get to the double helix of DNA. We then said each chromosome um, is connected by a centromere, okay? And each hot dog or each half of the chromosome is called a chromatid. Chromatin was the spaghetti inside of a nucleus when the DNA is all like messed up and mixed. But chromosome is when the cell's about to divide, it makes the chromosomes. That's the only time you see them. So the picture in the upper left shows a set of someone's chromosomes, and the picture at the bottom, bottom left, is a karyotype, which is um, shows your complete set of chromosomes. Sets 1 through 22 are your autosomes or your non-sex chromosomes. If you're male or female, you have pairs 1 through 22. We have the same autosomes. The last pair are your sex chromosomes, and if you have two Xs, you're female. If you have XY, you're male. So, what are genes? We use that word a lot. Hey, it's in your genes, man. What it is, it's basically a piece of DNA. So this B right here has genes for the color of its little fur, the size of its wing, um, what, where the eyes are placed on its face. And so a gene is a piece of DNA that codes for a protein or a hormone or anything um, that makes you or makes the bee. So that's what a gene is. It's a section of DNA that codes. Now the code is based on these series of letters, ATCG, which are called nitrogenous bases. And so DNA is made up of this thing on the right called a nucleotide. Nucleotide is made up of three things, a sugar, a phosphate, a nitrogenous base, all together. A sugar, a phosphate, a nitrogenous base. The sugar is the hexagon that looks like a little house. The phosphate is the balloon, which kind of make, looks like the movie Up, doesn't it? And then the nitrogenous base is this rectangle here. And so the DNA molecule is made up of a bunch of these. So let's look at that. If you take this guy right here, here's the sugar, the phosphate, and the nitrogenous base. You see them here. The nitrogenous base will pair up with its partner. We already know that A will always pair up with T and C will always pair up with G. And so that's how they hook up. Now the thing that keeps them bonded together is a hydrogen bond. 
A hydrogen bond is what connects the nitrogenous bases together. Okay, And a hydrogen bond is cool because it's kind of like a weak bond, so it could open up when the DNA needs to copy itself. So, one thing I'll ask you to do on the test is to give me the complementary strand. That means I give you one side of DNA and you give me the other side. So all you have to do is pair up A with T, T with A, C with G, yada, yada, yada. The other thing you need to understand about DNA replication or when a DNA copies itself is that this huge purple dude is a chromosome. But so is this. This is a chromosome after it replicates. This blue guy is chromosome before, chromosome after. Okay, so just know they come in single or double. Replication. Basically, we talked about the importance of when the DNA replicates. So you make more DNA when you have to make more cells, when you reproduce, when you have to grow. And basically, the way DNA copies itself is the double strand will actually unzip. And then each of those strands that are unzipped have letters on them. Those letters act as a template or sort of like a mold that free letters can then copy on the other side. So here's what I mean. Here's your DNA, right? Your DNA will split open and each side now acts as a template. So then our cells have a bunch of loose bases that will then pair up with the side that they go with. So A goes with D, D goes with A, and they all do all kinds of crazy stuff, except for that weirdo in the middle. But anyway, if you notice, we made two exact strands, and that's how DNA replicates. So, let's do, this is a do now we did. Difference between chromatin and chromatid. We said chromatin is the non-chromosome spaghetti-looking mess inside a chromosome. Sorry, inside of a nucleus. And it's the, it's the genetic material when a cell is not dividing. And a chromatid is one hot dog or one strand of a chromosome that is replicated. The complementary sequence for Gattaca <laughs> is C T A A T G T. Okay. Why is DNA replication necessary? We already said that. And, and uh, if you had 20% of adenine, you would have 20% of thymine, the T one. Okay. So what is this called? A nitrogenous base. Sorry, a nucleotide. Very good. What is that called? <laughs> DNA or double helix. What is that called? Gene. What is that called? Karyotype. What is that called? Aqua line. That's a nitrogenous base. What is that called? Sex chromosomes. What's that? Just a chromosome. What's that? Chromatid. What's that? DNA replication. What's that? Autosomes. Autosomes, non-sex chromosomes. Next. We then talked about genotype and phenotype. Genotype are basically the genes or the sequence of letters that make up your trait. Phenotype is what you look like. So we talked about this moth that has crazy owl eyes. Those crazy owl eyes are the phenotype or the appearance of the organism. Genotype is the genes. Phenotype is the appearance. So, how does DNA become appearance? How does genotype become phenotype? And so we talked about all these crazy words, and you did a whole project on it. So, just so you know, a quick refresher. Genotype becomes phenotype when DNA is read by RNA, and RNA is used to make proteins. The way it works is like this. We said that in your nucleus, you basically have the code in DNA, and the code is read by mRNA. mRNA inside the nucleus reads the code. It reads the code and leaves the nucleus where it enters a ribosome. And inside the ribosome, you have tRNA, which are those crazy floating guys right here. tRNA will come along and find the appropriate codon with its anticodon, and will bring over an appropriate amino acid and then make a long chain of amino acids. What? Okay, here's what I mean. Let's start with transcription. This image is the beginning of what I said that happens in the nucleus. This is called transcription. And in this picture, the big crazy purple circle oval thing is 
unzipping the DNA so it could be read by DNA's cousin, RNA. And so RNA comes along and reads the code letter by letter, okay? And so what it does is RNA copies over what letter goes with the DNA one. So if the RNA sees a T, it will put an A. If it sees an A, it will put a U, because remember RNA doesn't have T, and so on and so forth. After that RNA copies all the letters from DNA, it'll come over and it'll actually go into a ribosome and wait for tRNA. And so those letter big purple T's you see there, those are tRNAs. And tRNA has an anticodon on it. So in this picture, GAU, right here, GAU in the middle of the picture, is the anticodon for CUA. And so the anticodon finds the codon on mRNA and then brings over an appropriate amino acid. As soon as those amino acids all chain up, they're known as a polypeptide. They become a protein. Okay. So here's how we do it on paper. So basically, I'll give you cat gag or some kind of awesome DNA. And basically what you do is transcribe it. You do transcription by putting what RNA goes with that. You'll then look on the fancy chart that I'll give you, which you can see a little bit of here, and you look up the first three letters, the codon. So you look up translation, GUA stands for, and you look it up and you find VAL. You see it in the corner over there? And then you look up CUC and you write what amino that stands for. ALU. Awesome. So. Trans and then we did a practice one, so we won't even do this, but same thing. I will give you a long DNA sequence. You do the transcription, and then you use this chart for the translation. Okay. We said that mutations can happen. So the code is supposed to be cat gag, or C-A-T-G-A-G, -G, and that's normal. We know that if you have G, then you do the transcription, you get that, and when you do the translation, you get Val and Lu. This is a normal gene, but you can mess up that gene. Like, for example, this one, the letter A is changed to a C. So this is called a substitution. Just remember, like, basketball or sports where someone substitutes for another player, okay? And then in this one, we added an extra T in the cat's gag. This is called an addition. And this one, no, is not called subtraction. It's called the deletion. But we got rid of a letter. One of the G's is missing. Now, what's crazy is a substitution really isn't that bad. Like, for example, on the left is the normal hemoglobin. That's some protein in your blood. And if you notice, the letters are supposed to be CTT. That's if everything's cool. If there's a mutant, the T in the middle gets, gets replaced by an A and it becomes cat, C-A-T, that's a mess up. And we actually change the amino acid to val. And that's kind of bad. So that's a point, we call this a point mutation. A point mutation is only one thing is changed, one amino acid is changed. Now one thing to remember is we said this was the best mutation to get because sometimes you actually don't even change the amino acid. And so you're cool, you're fine. But the ones that are bad are these. This is a deletion, a deletion or a addition. They're terrible because what happens is if you get rid of one letter, like if you notice we get rid of this G, well, we actually mess up all the amino acids after that mistake because the RNA reads every three letters. So you just took one away. So you totally shifted everything. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's called a frame shift mutation. Uh, deletion and addition are types of frame shift.